which I have decided to discuss with you uh, on this demo class. As I mentioned that I have picked up the basic topic relating to gross domestic product and related issues, particularly in case of India. And, and in this class and the subsequent demo classes, I'll be continuing to discuss this concept of GDP and the other issues related to it. So therefore, I'll be discussing you the concept, discussing with you the methodology adopted to, to measure the GDP and the new methodology adopted by us uh, since 2015. What is the difference between the old and new methodology? And if we change the methodology, does it have any impact on the GDP estimates? And then we will see after doing all these things, we will analyze the, the GDP estimates released by the, the, the National Statistical Office on 31st May for the, um, for the uh, financial year 2022-23. The provisional estimates are issued by the uh, MOSP that we shall analyze at the end. So therefore, the whole, all this uh, issue relating to GDP I shall be covering in few demo classes. In this demo class, let me introduce you the concept of GDP. GDP, as you know, it stands for gross domestic product. It is a measure of the worth of country's economic activities. It means what is the volume of economic activities is measured uh, in the form of gross domestic product. And therefore, it is simply the sum of the goods and services produced at the current prices in an economy over a specific time period. It means, it means GDP is, is a flow concept. GDP is not a stock concept. GDP is measured over a specific time period. As I said, we in India, we measure the GDP for the financial year and the latest provisional estimates released by the, the National Statistical Office are relating to the financial year 2022-23. Therefore, in, in, uh, for starting from 1st April 22 and ending at 31st March 23, what has been the GDP, what has been the, uh, the value of the goods and services produced during this period will be summarized as the GDP in that particular year. Therefore, GDP is always measured in, uh, in a specific time period and therefore this is called a flow concept. This is a flow concept <coughs> and therefore while uh, calculating the GDP, we take into account both public and private, public consumption, government outlays, investments, inventories, etc., etc. And if the economy is open economy, then we also take into account the external balance of trade. That is the net exports, how much exports of goods and services we are doing and how much imports of goods and services we are taking, we are importing. And therefore the net of the two give you the balance of trade. That also uh, taken into account while calculating the GDP. So therefore, the GDP is, is nothing the value of goods and services produced. One thing which you have to uh, keep in mind is that exports which we are making is a part of the GDP because we are exporting only some part of the GDP which we have not consumed and exporting outside. But and therefore exports are produced in the economy and become part of the GDP. While imports are not produced by us, imports are produced by some uh, other countries, but we are consuming in our country. And therefore imports are not the part of the GDP. And therefore we always take the difference between exports minus imports and add it to the GDP to calculate the GNP gross national product. Therefore, the, this, the, the concept you should be very clear 
the GDP and GNP. GDP is basically the sum of the goods and services produced in the domestic economy, which includes exports also. But when we take into account imports and uh, we, we take into uh, our measure the net exports, then it becomes the GNP, gross national product. It means the whatever we have consumed and imported from the uh, outside, that is also taken into, cal into calculation of the GDP. And then it is called the GNP, gross national product. So GNP is the, 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 the domestically produced goods and the minus the imports we have done. And that's why the, the, these two concepts need to be understood uh, properly, GDP and GNP. Now, the, the GDP can be real and the nominal. If the good value of goods and services produced in an economy is taken at the constant prices, constant prices, and therefore the 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 GDP which comes to uh, come comes to uh, by that is called the real GDP, which is the GDP at the constant price, or it is also called inflation adjusted GDP. We have removed the impact of the prices on the GDP. We have kept the base year prices constant and measure the current year GDP at the constant prices so that any price change which has happened and uh, from the base year till current year uh, is not affecting the, the GDP. And that's why it is called real GDP. But when we measure the economic output or value of goods and services at the current prices, taking into account the, the, the impact of prices then it is called nominal GDP. The nominal GDP and real GDP is, is uh, are different only in the sense that one gives you the real worth of the goods and services produced in the economy, while the, the nominal GDP give you the value of goods and services produced measured at the prevailing prices in that year. And therefore, the real and nominal GDP need to be distinguished. And normally we deflate the nominal GDP to arrive at the real GDP and which deflator to be used that we shall be discussing uh, in this uh, in this discussion okay, what should be the deflator to be used to convert the nominal GDP into real GDP therefore the that we shall be discussing here but the concept need to be understand real GDP gave you the, the real worth of goods and services produced which are measured at the constant prices while the nominal GDP give you the value of goods and services produced at the at the prices prevailing in that particular period, and therefore the the impact on inflation is also taken into account while calculating the nominal GDP. And when we adjust the GDP with the inflation, we arrive at the real GDP. The GDP per capita, you know that <coughs> it, it gives you an idea about the how much per capita income of the country is, how much per capita income of the country is, which gives you an overall idea about the, the, the growth. But GDP and GDP per capita are considered to be the important indicators of the growth. Of course, the GDP per capita or GDP doesn't reveal the inequalities in the distribution of income. That is a different issue. But the normally all over the world, the GDP rate of growth or GDP per capita rate of growth are considered to be the indicators of the welfare of the society, welfare of the society. But if a particular society is inflicted with the huge inequalities, then the GDP per capita may not be reflecting the, the, the true welfare of the society. So that is a different aspect that we'll be considering at some other time. But the GDP per capita is also one of the important concepts which we have to find out. The, the other important area is if we really want to compare the GDP of a country with the other countries of the world, then we have to convert them into common base, into common base. And common base as developed is purchasing power parity purchasing power parity means that 
the the differences in the inflation rates prevailing in different countries need to be adjusted to arrive at the gdp at the purchasing power parity purchasing power parity simply means law of one price law of one price means all over the world a single price is prevailing assuming that there is no price differences in the between the countries then what will be the gdp or gdp per capita of a particular country only then you can compare gdp of india with gdp of china or gdp of us or the other countries therefore the conversion of the gdp into purchasing power parity is also a very very important area to understand an area to understand because we have to remove price differences between the countries before we arrive at the gdp at purchasing power parity so therefore the these are the concept we are we are using in calculating in calculating the <coughs> the gdp but normally in as far as we are concerned the three methods are there to calculate the gdp of course uh, we'll see that in in practice we have changed certain methodology which we, we shall be discussing but theoretically theoretically three methods are there to measure the gdp of a particular economy or of a particular country particular country the output method which is the value added by each producer income method that is the the income uh, or rewards given to the factors and the expenditure method uh, that is the the gdp measured through the expenditure made by the economy so these three methods are there output method income method and expenditure method for measuring the gdp the output method uh, G, uh, as per the output method the gdp is the value of output which is produced in the economy minus minus the value of goods and services is used up in producing these outputs that is the the value of inputs used in the production of output need to be removed from that suppose you are producing a particular uh, commodity say you are producing the 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 egg or or the anything any any other say paints you are producing to produce the particular paint what inputs we have used the the, the value of these inputs need to be removed from the final value of the paints you have produced that will give you the 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 value added that will give you the value added and for each industry we calculate the value added value added is the how much we have added to the value over, over the value of the inputs we have used value of the inputs we have used and then we add plus all taxes or paid on that particular product and minus all subsidies Uh, on the products, if you have received any, so therefore the the output method measures the the net value added, net value added in each sector, net value added in each sector, that is the the total value produced minus the value of inputs used plus taxes paid minus subsidy received. And we calculate this for each sector, and then we add, then we add. all the sectors together to get the gdp to get the to get the gdp you see that <clears throat> here if you if you if you see that suppose there are n sectors in the economy suppose there are n sectors in the economy if there are n sectors in the economy then the gdp will be equal to gdp will be uh, equal to the gdp in that situation will be equal to the sum of sum of sum of the 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 value produced in each sector sum of the value produced in each sector and therefore this is the output uh, method we have income method is we we measure the the gdp from the point of view of the rewards paid to the various factors used in the process of production and we we, we know that uh, under the 
restrictive agents are themselves. The factor speed to the reward should be equal to the value of output produced. Value of the 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 output produced. And therefore, this this is the alternative way to measuring the GDP is the income method, where we add all factors rewards together. That is, if we have employed the workers, we have paid wages. If we have employed the capital, we have paid rent. If we have employed the land, we have paid uh, uh, rent. If we have employed the capital, we have paid the rate of interest. And entrepreneurs also get the profit as a share of their uh, reward for organizing all factors together. And this will be this will give you the sum of the factor rewards, sum of the factor rewards. And therefore, when the sum of the factor rewards are added, and plus the taxes paid on the factor income and subsidies or transfer payments received, if any, by the factors, then we get the total value of GDP by income method. Total value of GDP by income method, and this is this is the this is the 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 important method which we have been using right from the beginning, 1951 onwards. We are using the GDP at factor cost. This is normally called GDP at factor cost. GDP at factor cost, and therefore the GDP at factor cost is given by the the measuring the the Value of the the amount paid to various factors during that particular period of time, and the best way of uh, doing that is if at the given at the given prices we measure the change in the value of output during the particular period of time, and the difference in the change in the value of output, the prices have not changed. We measure at the constant prices that will be uh, giving you the. Total factor cost involved, and total rewards paid to the factors. Therefore, income method is nothing but you add the factor rewards together and adjust with the taxes and subsidies. You get the GDP at factor cost. GDP at factor cost, and this is a very very important uh, method. We have been using uh, the concept of national income um, till recently as a GDP at factor cost. GDP at factor cost. Of course, we have changed the definition now, but till very recently, we have been using the national income as GDP at factor cost. And therefore, these are the sectors we define and start measuring the change in the value of output, and then it will give you the GDP by income method. But the value uh, change is measured at the constant prices. The last method is the expenditure method, in which we try to look at the expenditure done by the by the consumers, by the investors, by the government, or by the exporters and importers uh, on the various goods and services. Because consumption expenditure, all the expenditure done by the different groups should be equal to the value of output produced. By definition, it should be, but the 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 normally if they are different then they are different because of the the taxes and subsidies given by the government or imposed by the government at various levels the consumer spending uh, by individuals plus the net expenditure by central and local government plus capital spending by all the entrepreneurs plus exports minus imports this will give you the gdp according to the gross domestic product gdp according to the gross domestic product gross domestic product so this is given by the expenditure method when we measure expenditure therefore the the gdp should come out equal by all the methods after making the adjustment after making the adjustment but if you still there is a some discrepancy that discrepancy has to be adjusted statistically and that is the job of the national statistical office to to address that statistical discrepancy if there in the measure of gdp by the three methods and therefore the three methods which you need to know i will repeat is the output method income method and expenditure method and the 
the GDP should come out similar after making adjustments with regard to taxes and subsidies. But as I said, if still there is a deficiency, if still there is a deficiency or discrepancy in the measures, then it has to be addressed by the statistical office through various statistical methods available. And after doing that, the these uh, GDP is published. More recently, as you are, uh, you know that the, we started measuring the GDP and the GVA, gross domestic product and the gross value added. So, what is the difference between the two? What is the difference between the two? The GDP measures the 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 the, the economy is worth from the expenditure side or from the demand side. That is by adding all the expenditure together, we get the GDP. Or we can also get the GDP from the the the, the income method, as I said. But normally, uh, it is easier to use the expenditure method to calculate the GDP because the expenditure data is easily available, easily available with us. And why GVA, gross value added, provides a picture of the economy from the supply side. From the supply side, as I said in the output method, we use the value added. For each sector, we calculate the value added by that particular sector over and above the value of the inputs. Because every industry adds something over and above the inputs they are using. And they are selling that new product in the market uh, with the use of uh, which with the use of input they have produced. But to calculate the net value addition by that particular sector, we have to remove the value of inputs used in the production of that particular product. And that's why the, the GVA give you the position of the economy from, from the supply side, while GDP gives you the economy's position from the demand side. That difference you have to always keep in mind. And the gross value added will be equal to GDP if we added all subsidies received on the products and minus all taxes paid on the products. If we adjust the subsidies and taxes, then the gross value added should be equal to GDP. Should be equal to GDP. And therefore, the GDP versus GV, these two concepts we are using these days to discuss or express or present the details of the, the national income estimates. As I mentioned that in 1915, we have made a comprehensive changes in the methodology of calculating the GDP, which is in, in consonance with the instructions issued by the United Nations system of national accounts. United Nations systems of national accounts. And these, these measures, these changes are broadly uh, concerned with the following areas. That is, change of the base year. This is a normal phenomenon. Right from the beginning, we are changing the base year after, say, uh, 10 years, sometimes 7 years, 8 years, depending upon the, the normalcy of a particular year, we change the base year. And replacing the factor cost with the market prices. The, the national income at factor cost is not an internationally uh, accepted measure and no country measures the national income at factor cost. And therefore, we have replaced the, the GDP at factor cost with GDP at basic prices. Then I'll introduce what the basic prices is and what are the market prices are. Then we have broadened the database of the economy. And we, I'll highlight the areas where the database has been increased over a period of time. Then we'll also improve the coverage of the financial corporations. In the earlier methodology, the financial corporations were not given due weightage in estimation of GDP. And therefore, to that extent, GDP was supposed to be underestimated. But now, because of the, the widespread demonetization of the economy, widespread development of the financial sector of the economy, the financial corporations or financial sector plays a very, very important role. 
in GDP estimation that we have to take into account, that we have to take into account uh, in the new methodology. Therefore, new methodology has been introduced from the year 2015 onwards. 2015 onwards. As I said that the, the first change we have introduced is that the change in the base year. Change in the base year. Because over a period of time, the, the data availability has improved. Over a period of time, maybe the pattern of production has changed. Maybe over a period of time, some of the items are eliminated. New items have been introduced. And therefore, over a period of time, the, the, the structure of India's the structure of economy must have changed. And that's why to incorporate the changes, changes in the, in the system, we changes the base year. We changes the base year. You see that right from 48, 49 till now, how many times we have changed the base year, which I have given here uh, chronologically. 48, 49 to 60, 61, the, the, the base year was changed 67. 60, 61 to 70, 71, base year changed in 78. And last change which we have introduced is, is uh, 2015, when we have changed the base year from 2004-05 to 2011-12. And this is the, the latest base we are using even at the moment to, to calculate the GDP. And therefore, change in the base year is a normal phenomenon which we keep changing in the past also over a period of time. But while changing the base year this time, the, the other changes have also been introduced in the methodology, which are very, very important. That is three major components uh, influence the present revision exercise. That is the exercise we have introduced in 2015. That is the the complete review of the existing database and methodology applied in estimation of various macroeconomic aggregates, aggregates have been changed over a period of time. And we have to, uh, we have to align, we have to make our uh, GDP methodology uh, in alliance with the methodology developed by the UN system of national accounts. And therefore, all these uh, compulsions led to the changes in the in the in the in the in the in the base of the gdp in india and therefore the coverage of the database has been expanded expanded over a period of time and that i'll discuss in brief the the changes introduced in the coverage of the database over a period of time over a period of time for example the the corporate sector in 2004-05 series, till 2004-05 series, we, what we were using, that private corporate sector data is being used, which is based on the RBI study on company finances. That is till 2004-05, or till we introduced the new series in 11-12, the private corporate sector data is extrapolated based on the RBI study on company finances. An RBI study is based on the the financial results of around 2,500 companies. Therefore, based on the 2,500 companies, we extrapolate the the result of the whole private corporate sector, whole private corporate sector. But in 2007-8, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has also started producing the data on company affairs and they are asking all the companies to submit the, their balance sheet and profit and loss account online online to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs is uploading this data on their website and therefore we have a ready-made data available about the lakhs of companies on the website of Ministry of Corporate Affairs. And therefore, instead of using the RBI study, which is based only on 2,500 companies, we have started using the, the, the data of about 5 lakh companies, which have been uh, uploaded by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. 
and based on the analysis of these five lakh companies, we we try to find out share of the private corporate sector in the GDP. In the GDP, therefore, comprehensively, database has been increased. Comprehensively, database of corporate sector has been expanded. Corporate sector has been expanded. Similarly, in case of the wholesale and retail trade. Estimation of GVA is now being done on the basis of sales tax returns. Sales tax returns. Earlier we were con- we were measuring the wholesale and retail trade based on the growth of wages and employment in these sectors. In the wholesale sector, retail sector, what is the growth of wages and employment? Based on that, we try to find out their share in the GDP. But now, but now uh, since we have a uh, online sales tax returns available with us, we calculate the wholesale and retail trade contribution based on the sales tax returns. Therefore, the, the, the database has been expanded. Database has been expanded uh, in under the new methodology. Therefore, the two things which I have mentioned today is the, uh, the improvement in the coverage, corporate sector, how the corporate sector coverage has been expanded over a period of time. I I, I think that uh, I have to stop here and because it's a big topic. And in the next demo class, I'll be discussing with you the further changes in methodology introduced by uh, us in 2015. And then we will see the implications of this new methodology. After understanding the concept and methodology, then we will move on to the GDP estimates uh, published by the National Statistical Office, Minister of Statistics and Program Implementation. And I hope uh, it will give you the information, comprehensive information about the GDP. Therefore, you uh, continue to attend these classes. This will give you the comprehensive idea about the GDP estimation and GDP estimates in India. Thank you very much and uh, uh, best of luck. Thank you.